it's a, a big transformative time for the industry overall. Jay, you spoke about multi-physics, multi-domain. Is our industry ready for this? In addition to multi-domain problem, it's also a multi-scale problem. Hey Jairaj, welcome to Apla Pune. Welcome to ANSYS. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of Fireside Chat with Jairaj, our field CTO for high tech and APAC at ANSYS. In the first episode of Fireside Chat, Earlier this year, we spoke about industry trends across semiconductors, aerospace and defense, electronics, and, uh, and healthcare. In this episode, we are going to drill deeper into semiconductor chip design and role of multi-physics in enhancing semiconductor chip design. Hello, Jairaj. Welcome back to Apple Pune. Last time we met, you were new to this role. How have been the past few months for you? Very good. And first of all, thank you for having me in Pune again. Uh, it's been super exciting time working with customers, engaging the broader ecosystem. It's a, a big transformative time for the industry overall. So I'm in the middle of that transformation. Engaging customers is the best thing you could do. Understanding their problems, understanding the use case scenarios, and then building more and more innovations with them. With the global semiconductor sales touching 57.8 billion last year, the need for semiconductor industry to scale has never been so apparent. We hear a lot about heterogeneous multi-die designs and so on. Can you comment on what is the current state of semiconductor in chips and what lies ahead? Yeah, exciting times. I think uh, over the decades, semiconductor industry has relied on transistor scaling for performance and efficiency and uh, physical limits of process nodes as well as the cost-benefit equation has dramatically shifted. So newer architectures, newer ways of uh, building SOCs has taken shape, especially heterogeneous integration of uh, different dyes from different process nodes with specialized capabilities in them. An example is, you know, even look at the Qualcomm chip with the CPU, GPU, and NPU integrated in. Uh, so these multi-die architectures bring in components like CPU, which is general purpose computing, uh, you know, GPUs were very good and are still very good at parallel processing for graphics rendering as well as AI training. But NPUs are now bringing to bear this special tensor operation capability, which actually gives you uh, the ability to run AI workloads, but it requires uh, specialized data paths, memory hierarchies, and uh, computational elements that accelerate neural network models. Now, all of these new fascinating architectures bring in additional complexity because they come from different process nodes uh, and the interconnects um, are moving uh, high velocity data uh, from one die to the other die. The design of heterogeneous multi-die systems with NPUs introduces unprecedented complexity across multiple domains. Can you elaborate what does it mean for simulation? Yeah, of course. In fact, uh, simulation used to be a verification tool, right? And now it's a critical enabler of innovation. If you look at the novel architectures that designers are putting together, they have the ability to simulate a system more holistically. These multi-die architectures or SOCs are complex system of systems. So let's take uh, the scenario of uh, electrical performance. Electrical performance leads to several different thermal profiles. Heat dissipation leads to varying electrical performance. You can see the interdependency between these uh, physics. So it's a multi-domain problem. In addition to multi-domain problem, it's also a multi-scale problem because now you're looking at a nanometer uh, transistor level uh, simulation to a chip level uh, simulation where you're dealing in centimeters, for example. So the ability to navigate uh, with the simulation tool across different scales and across different physical domains is very important. Another factor here now is the die-to-die -die interconnects or high bandwidth, low power uh, scenarios where you have to have a good understanding of the electromagnetics uh, associated with it because signal integrity is directly proportional to reliability and performance of the chip that you're designing. So overall, in, in a sense, Multi-physics and multi-scale uh, simulation leads to better innovation. 
So you spoke about multi-physics, multi-domain. Is our industry ready for this? It's quite a challenge. And I think uh, in addition to the process and workflow, the, which is being transformed by the ecosystem of providers of technology, the EDA design vendors, the simulation software, the foundries that are manufacturing these products, all that certification enabling process are going on. But the most important part, which I want to highlight, is the skill set development. If you look at it, if you look at an electrical electronic engineer, uh, I think their ability to understand and comprehend what happens when different materials expand, uh, you know, because of heat, so thermal stress related warpage of the silicon, those are also important knowledge and domain aspects that they should understand and comprehend in the holistic design of the system. So the point is skills development across multiple domains will enable the next generation of engineers to do a better job at innovating. So curriculum, content, education, training, academic programs, all of those uh, are going to be the focus of the industry. Thanks, Jairaj, for joining today's session. It has been a pleasure learning from you about state-of-the-art semiconductor chips, the design challenges involved, multi-physics simulation, and the skills needed. I really look forward to our next session. Thank you again. Thank it's you. always a pleasure coming to Pune, especially in the middle of a mango season. Wonderful. Take care.